In this video, we will show you the basic and important text block when building a voice flow chat bot. It covers the comprehensive tutorial from fundamental to advanced usages, such as iframe and trace. Let us go to the voice flow canvas. If it is the first time for you to log on to your account, you may see a template, which you can delete. After that, it may look like this. Let us move the cursor to the talk icon and drag the text block and drop it onto the canvas. On the right, there is a text editor, and we can enter context with styles. The text block is the fundamental building block in voice flow, and we can use a text block to greet the user, ask questions, give instructions, and display answers. Let us go to the learn page of voice flow. We can see the introduction of the text step. It explains what a text step is. It shows how and when to use a text step. You can add markdown and message delay. You also can add variants in the text block. We will show you all the details step by step. Even if you are a first time user, after following this video, you will become an expert. Let us get back to the voice flow canvas. We are going to greet the user, enter the text in the editor. I am the AI assistant of Mars Pizza Restaurant. We can click the arrow to run a test. On the right, we can see the dialog window where we can test the chatbot and input questions. The text block has run successfully and it shows the greeting to the user as expected. Let us click the Back to Designer button. Next, let us ask the user a question, say, what can I help you with? When the user sees this question, he can either input his answer or press one of the provided buttons for the next step. But you may not want the user to see the same question again and again when he comes to this, which may be boring. In order to have a better user experience, we can provide variants of the question so that the system will randomly pick one variant each time when the user comes to this. You can add the variants manually, or let voice flow generate the variants for you. If we click the generate button, we can see different options. Let us click to generate five variants. Voice flow gives us the first variant. How may I assist you? If you think it is good, you can press the enter key on your computer. In the black pop-up window, you can see the instructions. Let us press the enter key to accept this variant. You can see the second variant. Let us accept it. And you can do the same for the rest of the variants. Let us run a test. This time it shows a different variant, which says, can I be of assistance to you? If we run another test, we will see another different variant. This time it shows, how may I assist you? The system can randomly pick a variant. This gives the user a much better experience. If we click this icon, we can see all the variants listed in the pop-up window. If you want to edit the variants, you can click on the pencil icon. If you want to make a copy of the variants, you can click the copy icon. Let us change the name of this text block to text block demo. Next, we will show you how to use the editor style icons to mark down the text in different styles, such as bold, italics, underline, and strike through. Let us go to the web page of voice flow and fetch a sentence over there. Let us select this text and make a copy. In this text block, we have several variants. If you do not need the variants, you can click the minus sign to delete it. Let us paste the text here. At the bottom of the text editor, we can icons for different styles, which are easy and convenient to use. Let us select two words text step and click on the icon to make them bold. Let us select important and make it italic. We select assistant and make it underlined. We then select communicate and click the strike through icon. Let us run a test. We can see all the styles successfully shown here. In the following, we will show you how to use the hyperlink in the text. Let us enter the text this is URL. We select URL and click this icon to add a hyperlink. Let us go to the voice flow web page and make a copy of its address. We then click on the hyperlink icon and paste the URL here. After this, we run a test. It shows the text and the URL with the hyperlink. If we click the link, it opens up the web page. This is very useful. You can let the user not only open a URL, but also a calendar link, mail to, and phone call, etc. Next, we will check out other properties of the text block. If you click on the three dot icon, you can either duplicate or delete this text block. If you click on the plus sign, you can add a new variant. Click on the plus sign again, and add the third variant, and so on. You also can click the generate button to let voice flow automatically generate the variants for you. If you click this icon, it shows the canvas visibility of the variants. You can click the radio button to show the preview or all the variants, and you can set either of them as default. Next, we will show you how to use a variable in the text block. Let us click the minus sign to delete the variant. 
we enter the text. This is an example using a variable. If you enter a curly brace, you can see the list of variables. Let us select the variable of question. The variable can store the user question, which gives the chat bot high flexibility. The last button we want to show you is the message delay. By default, it is 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second delay. You can change to a desired number, for example, 2000. It is very easy to connect a text block with other blocks. The logic flow is from the left to the right. You can connect the previous block to its left and connect the next block to its right. You can pick any block. Here we choose another text block. In the following, we are going to show you another important application of the text block. We will put an iframe code in the editor to display a YouTube video to the user. Let us go to my YouTube channel and click this video. On this video, right click the mouse and click on the copy embed code to make a copy of the iframe code. Let us go back to the voice flow canvas and paste the iframe code in the text editor. We will need to modify the iframe code a little bit in order for it to work. We will store and replace the URL with a variable. The first thing we are going to do is to change the width and height to auto. This will let the iframe automatically adapt the width of the chatbot window and keep the original width to height ratio. Next, let us drop a set block onto the canvas. Click the button to create a new variable. Enter the name of the variable URL and create it. As I have already created one, let us click to cancel. We can select the variable URL from the variable list. We then select the URL, make a copy, and paste it on the box between the quotation marks. We connect these blocks. We are going to replace the URL with the variable. In the SRC attribute, we delete the URL and enter the variable surrounded by the curly braces. With all the modifications, we cannot directly run the iframe on the canvas. We will need to publish the chatbot first. We will see the pop-up window showing successfully published. We click the embed widget button. Select this part of the code and make a copy. Next, let us go to Google's web page. Right-click the mouse and click on the inspect. On the right, click the console tab. We paste the code here and press the enter key of the computer. We can see the chatbot bubble at the bottom. Let us click on the icon and the chat window shows up. Click the play button and we can see everything works just fine. This can be very useful if you want to display something from an iframe and do not want the user to leave the chat window. You can use many other iframes such as Calendly and Google Form. Next, we delete these blocks and add a custom action block on the canvas. We rename it as text trace because we will use it to work with text trace to act as a text block. We will need to add some parameters in the custom action block. Let us go to the developer docs webpage of VoiceFlow. In the trace types, we can find the text type. The text trace is in JSON format. It shows the type of text and payload. The data in the payload is what we need. We select it and make a copy. Back to the custom action block, we enter text as the type. In the action body, we choose the JSON radio button and paste the trace here. We will need to do some cleanup. We do not need the ID, and we can delete it. Next, we are going to delete some comments. We clean up the comment at the message delay milliseconds, and the comment at the delay. We can see the trace has all the data of a text block, such as the text content, and the time delay, which is by default 1000 milliseconds. Next, let us run a test to see how it goes. We see the action block has successfully displayed the text message as expected. In the following, we are going to store the trace in a variable. We add a JavaScript block on the canvas. We make a copy of the trace in the action block. In the JavaScript block, we enter the variable answer and paste the trace here. Next, we are going to convert the variable to a string and save it. The function we are going to use is json.stringifa, which converts the JSON data to a string. In the custom action block, we can now delete the JSON data and place the variable answer here. Let us connect the JavaScript block with the custom action block and run a test. We can see it successfully shows the text message here. We have shown that the custom action block can render the text trace and act as a text block. Next, we will show that we can use a function to return the text trace, which will be very useful in some applications. Let us go to the functions. I have created a function, which is a simple demo to return a text trace. Let us click and take a look. This is a very simple function. We use a constant variable to save the text string which we want to display to the user. We simply return the trace with the type of text and the payload containing the message. We put the variable in the message. That's it. Let us go back to the canvas. 
Let us drop a functions block on our canvas. We select the function text block trace. We also can see the description of this function. Let us click the run button to run a test on this function and click the execute button. We can see the green status of success. We also can see the trace shown here. This trace is returned by this function and will be implemented by the program. Now, let us run a test on the block and we can see the text message is successfully displayed to the user. In summary, we have shown the basic and important text block when building a chatbot and voice flow. The text block can greet the user, display instructions, ask questions to interact with the user. It also can render iframe code and the user does not have to leave the chat window, which gives a better user experience. In the final part, we have shown the text trace can be implemented by a custom action block or returned by a function, which can have very important applications in some scenarios. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.